I've had a phone call from a horse box manufacturer today. They've got vehicle stability control and a brake system warning malfunction. So we're going to head down there now and see what we can do. We're leaving sunny Wrexham today and heading over the border to Shrewsbury. And then we're going down into tractor country to Lempster. It's about an hour and a half drive. Or so I thought. With me feeling like I was taking part in a tractor run, I managed to get the van up to 63 miles per gallon. The workshop controller was nice enough to show me round all the chassis they had in build and the various stages of the production. To say I was like a kid in a candy shop was an understatement. Myself, also coming from a family run bodybuilders, we had railway sheds brought over from Ellesmere Port in the 1950s and the family set up shop in Gresford building horse boxes and livestock bodies for trucks and... As the technology improves, so did the manufacturing processes, moving from wood to aluminium bodies. But, like everything in life, if you don't grasp technology with both hands, you eventually become irrelevant. And in 1992, with my grandfather not willing to continue to build and invest in the business, what once had over 30 employees supporting families and the local economy got turned to rubble and then to a housing estate. And this is why technology and teaching is so important to me and the future of our industry. Anyway, enough of the past. We best fix this daft. As usual, identifying the customer's concern. With the ignition on, we have the VSC light on our dip and brake system malfunction. I immediately notice the steering wheel angle and lean out to check the wheel position in relation to the cab for a quick point of reference. With our warnings identified, we can get out gel tests from Eclipse and get plugged into the vehicle. With the auto VIN identification used, we only need to concentrate on brakes, so no need to read all the faults from all the ECUs. With EBS3 identified as our ECU system, we can concentrate on this and identify our DTCs. With VSC system error and steering wheel angle sensor issues, this component has been replaced under advice from the dealer, but it still persists. I can count on one hand how many of these I've changed. With gel test giving me time and date logs for the error, technical data and location, this might be something I'm going to have to get more invasive with later and monitor the CAN bus with PicoScope due to the fault stating its emittent data. But first, the basics. The real question on my mind is, what is the system seeing from the steering angle sensor to interpret this as incorrect or intermittent data? Intermittent could be a loss of comms, but incorrect? Well, I can check this. That is not straight. Now, as you can see, we have a steering wheel alignment issue. The steering wheel is off center, but the steering angle is reading practically straight on gel test. So, what happens if we straighten the steering wheel up? As if we were driving down the road? Down the road and it's like this. Yeah. That thinks it's at minus 26 degrees. So what you've got here is a mark on the shaft, a mark on the seal, and a mark on the box. And they all need to be in line. Well, the steering box is all correct, but the steering is sat at minus 27 degrees. With the cause of the issue identified, that being a vehicle mass calculation issue due to the incorrect data provided by the steering angle sensor, we're going to need to make some adjustments. What I'm choosing to do here is correct the steering column alignment while monitoring steering angle with gel test. Once I hit zero degrees here and with my marks right on the steering box, I can worry about the drag link, tracking and steering wheel alignment. So we're on one there, that's back on there. Let's go lock in the cab. I'm going to move on to the steering wheel next as it's nowhere near straight.
with my Truck Tech UK steering wheel remover kit, which I will leave a link in the description down below, I can get this steering wheel pulled off and adjusted to the straight ahead position to match our steering angle sensor and our correctly set steering box. You will notice no rubber bush around the clock spring wiring which is something I will advise the customer about which I covered in a previous video about the clock spring. <laughs> with the steering wheel talked up to never going to fall off, I was graced with some Dunlop style tracking gauges. Not the usual laser alignment kit I'm used to seeing fitted to the front and rear of a truck to do this task but seeing as I'm poor I'll have to remember how to use this today. With what I can remember about setting this up, one goes against the wheel, then the other one gets matched to that. We then check for zero degrees tow in and tow out before seeing what state the truck is in, but to my surprise it was well within DAF's specification. Oh. With me happy that the fault in the steering was more the top end than the steering box down, I was happy to delete the errors in JAL test and follow our on-screen instructions for us to carry out a calibration procedure. This should be done when any alterations are performed to the steering and since we've messed with practically everything, this is hopefully the final piece of our puzzle. With the vehicle stability control calibrated, it has asked me not to have JAL test plugged in till the validation is complete which will require a road test over 20 km per hour and a turn of 180 degrees and a straight ahead distance of 250 meters. We best go find a big roundabout and some straight roads then. So off we go, going round and round the roundabout like we were lost and heading up the road to complete the truck's validation session. With the truck now happy with the angle measurement, the light had gone off on the dip for the vehicle stability control and I could plug JAL test back in to monitor the angle sensor best I could. And we could also check the steering wheel angle on the straight road back to the workshop. As you can see from the monitoring data, we're in the single digits for steering angle now and under 5 degrees on this on the road. With the driver happy that the steering was straight and comfortable for him, we headed back to the workshop. I couldn't resist asking for a tour of this amazing horse box, so the workshop controller kindly took me on a tour. I couldn't get over how much room was in the back here for horses, it was like the bloody ark. But what got me more was the standard of finish and fitment. I've seen new trucks on PDI which have been put together worse than this and the fact that the sides come out to increase the living space made me realise how much thought and time had gone into the planning of all of this. This thing is amazing. My usual thoughts of working on one of these is no access to anything and a cab that doesn't tip. But the workshop controller explains to me that this has access to all sorts of places for maintenance and the cab actually tips when working on it which makes working on the engine a piece of cake. With leather everywhere and a sleeping area above the cab and at the other end of the living area, it certainly ticked all the boxes for comfort. With all the controls and isolators fitted on one panel from a fault finding point of view, things don't get much better than this. And it even had a shower, a toilet and a sink. The storage and toys just keep coming on the outside too, with LED lights and a reverse camera fitted and even more storage. It even has a bolt-in cover to access the fuel tank sender. I can see the years of manufacturing these types of bodies means they have everything well thought out. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this on the road video and as usual, please give it a like if you have, subscribe if you want to see me try and fix some more trucks and I'll catch you in the next one.